Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to be with you. Uh, the Pentecostals of York are coming to you. Stream uh, into your homes. Uh, it's an incredible, incredible time that we're living in. A great time to be a part of the kingdom of God. And we're so glad that we can be with you. Uh, you can worship with us. Um, that the Holy Ghost can move in each and every house, in each and every home, in each and every living room, or wherever you're watching this stream. We're thankful that you are uh, a part of this. Um, so glad to be a part of the kingdom of God in this wonderful, wonderful hour that we live in. Um, we're, we're so excited about what God is doing. He is still moving through all of this. He is still moving, and we are so thankful. We are so thankful. Um, I, I wanted to give a, just a, maybe an announcement or two as we, uh, as we begin this. Um, as you may have heard, uh, the Church Center app is now uh, up and running. Um, those of you who do not have the Church Center app, you can go to the App Store. Um, you can go to the App Store on your smartphone. You don't need a mask to go to this store and download the Church Center app. It is completely free. Um, and it's beneficial because you can keep up to date with all the events and all the information sharing that goes on with the Pentecostals of York. Um, it will uh, uh, keep you up to date on all the uh, occasional uh, things going on with uh, your home groups. Um, hopefully, um, uh, all, we're, we're taking advantage of the home group uh, ministry. Um, this is an awesome ministry that was started here at the Pentecostals of York uh, by Brother Jaron Tipton, and we are very thankful for that. We feel like this is something that is very needful in the day and age that we live. And so uh, we wanted to remind you to stay connected, to stay connected. Um, the Bible says, tells us that iron sharpeneth iron. And we need to, more so than ever before, to stay connected and interact with one another, share things with one another. I'm sure we know that, uh, that the Zoom meetings um, have, uh, have been a huge part of this. And if you haven't been a part of the Zoom meetings, please, I encourage you, Day to, to be a part of those Zoom meetings. It's, it's a great way to, to stay connected, to stay in contact. We all need to stay in contact with one another, um, to give each other encouragement. Um, the leadership, the leaders of these home group ministries are doing a fantastic job. And, and even they, even the leaders of these, mini, of these home groups need encouragement now from time to time. I know I do. And so uh, we wanted to encourage you to, um, to stay involved with your home groups. Um, share uh, testimonies with each other, share uh, praise reports, uh, prayer requests, um, share share a recipe if you have one, a good recipe. I know I love good recipes. Chicken quarantine. I mean, I'm sorry, chicken florentine. Amen. We love good recipes. And so uh, uh, that brings me to the next one, which is uh, we, uh, we have an emergency food fund that we set up here at the Pentecostals of York to help people through serious situations such as this current one that we're seeing right now. If you would like to donate to this fund, you can through www.thepoy.com. Click online giving at the top of the web page and then scroll to the very bottom of that page and click emergency food fund. Amen. We all, uh, many of you have been so generous uh, with this emergency food fund. Uh, we talk about being like Jesus and, and being like Jesus. He said, I was hungry and I needed someone to give me food. He said, when you have done, the, done this to the least of these, you've done it unto me. So by doing this, we are being uh, the instrument of the Lord helping people out with these basic needs. So thank you for all your donations that, that, have, been al that have been received already. Um, you have been, once again, very generous in your giving. And it, as, as you were able to give, continue to give. And we really appreciate that uh, when it comes to the emergency food fund. Uh, we wanted to let you, everyone know that next Sunday, a week from today, uh, Reverend Bobby Wade will be our special speaker for our uh, Pentecost Sunday service. Um, many of you are familiar with Brother Bobby Wade. He's a revivalist preacher from Michigan, and he will be here for service that Sunday. If the Hopefully the weather cooperates. We're going to trust and believe God that the weather is going to cooperate, and we are going to be able to have that service outside in the parking lot, um, just like last Sunday. Um, 
the service. Um, if you if you are uh, if you're able to, you are we, we encourage you to bring your chairs, bring your long chair, lawn chairs, pop up chairs, place them in front of your vehicles. Um, you will not want to miss this service. This is going to be an awesome time. Um, we believe that God's going to move in this service. That the Holy Ghost is going to move. That people are, are going to experience many many miracles. Um, Bobby Wade is is a man of God that operates in the gifts of the Spirit. Very mightily used of the Lord. So you will not want to miss this tremendous service. I believe that it's going to be the best outdoor Pentecost Sunday that we've ever had. Can I get a witness? Amen. So we, we are looking forward to that. And so um, we want you to worship with us today. We want you to allow the Holy Ghost to move in your homes or wherever you may be viewing this. Amen. Take advantage of this awesome time. Amen. And we're going to give the Lord the glory today, all of the glory that He's worthy of. Amen. In Jesus' name.
my strong tower, my rock and my fortress, in whom I trust in time of the storm and in tribulation.
How many are thankful for the goodness of the Lord, the goodness and the mercy of God? His goodness and mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. His truth endureth to all generations. And I am thankful for His mercy, for the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And His blood is available for each and every one of us today. God has been so good to us. And I am so glad that I am able to be faithful to the kingdom of God, that He has given me an opportunity to be a part of this kingdom. Amen. Uh, so we are going to take up our, uh, we are going to introduce um, our uh, Sunday tithing and offering. Um, as many of you know, um, we're unable to uh, receive that uh, physically and in person. And so um, if you could, if you would like to give your tithing and offering, um, you could do so through PayPal. Um, you could send those offerings um, to the website www.thepoy.com through PayPal or you can send them via the mail to 3920 Farm Drive, York, Pennsylvania, 17402. Um, if you have any questions or you're a little uncertain about how to set up a PayPal account, there are PayPal setup instructions on the Church Center app. Um, that we have asked you to download. Once again, it's for free. You can go to your to go to the app store and do that, um, and you can register for. And you you will receive an email that will have a couple web links that will walk you through setting up a PayPal account um, that will allow you to do the online giving. And we encourage you to do that um, if you would like to give your tithing and offering. Um, we thank you. I thank all of you. Um, you've been tremendous in your giving. And we're, we're thankful that you are faithful to the kingdom of God. Amen. So we're going to pray right now over the offering that uh, God would bless the tithing and the offering today. We're going to um, say, our, say our statement of faith today. Upon the authority of your word I have given and it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. I receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God in perfect health and abundance in order to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in. I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you in your giving. Let the praise 
praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let it rise. Praise the Lord. Praise His holy name. Church, um, I know this is a little bit different. I know this is a lot of getting used to. This is, this is a lot different than what I'm used to. So I, I'm thankful that uh, all of you are bearing with, with us today, bearing with me today. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it today. I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to worry about what the future holds, about what the next moment holds, but I'm going to rejoice in this moment that God has given me. Amen. If you have your Bibles wherever you are, if you could uh, turn in your Bibles, amen, to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 35. John chapter 4, verse 35. Jesus in this passage of Scripture is speaking to His 12 disciples. Getting them prepared for ministry. There are many of us to here today and those watching, possibly around the world, who knows, that you desire to be used by the, in the kingdom of God. And desire to be a vessel that the Lord can use. And God wants to use you. God is able to use you. To able to work a miracle and something awesome and great in your life. And God wants to prepare you for what is coming. For the future. For what He is trying to do in this world. And the same was true back then for His disciples. In the generation they lived in. And it says in John chapter 4 and verse 35, Jesus speaks to his disciples and says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. I want to talk to you today about the church's finest hour. I believe right now is the right time for revival i believe right now is the right time for miracles to happen i believe right now is the right time for people to get out of wheelchairs for people that were uh, addicted to drugs and alcohol to come and be delivered from that bondage that has bound them for so long i believe now is the right time for truth to be revealed in the dark places where for so long and for so many years uh, wickedness and, and, and lies have, have taken hold. But, but we believe that now is the time. Now is the hour. And it's the church's finest hour that the strongholds are going to be broken. That the things that are loosed in heaven are going to be loosed in earth. The things that are bound in heaven are going to be bound in earth. That God is going gonna, is gonna to use His church and use His people to reach this world. I know we have a tendency to say, well, let's just wait till uh, this, all this COVID... Uh, outbreak just passes along and and then maybe four months 
Just, just like Jesus was talking to his disciples, maybe three or four months from now, when things start getting back to normal, maybe then, maybe then we can put our feet to the throttle and, and, and go full speed toward revival and do what God has called us to do. But I believe now, I believe now is the accepted time, that today is the day of salvation. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I've seen the post and I've seen the memes that 2020 be like and 2020 is like a guy falling off a cliff or 2020 is like that song on your playlist that you just want to skip every time you hear it because you want to get to the next song that you really like, that you're really comfortable with, that you can really jam to, that you can really stomp your foot to because you don't really like the song that's coming on next. So let's just skip over it. And we have a tendency to do that in our lives. Let's just skip through the bad times. Let's just skip through the times where we feel inconvenienced and we feel uncomfortable comfortable. But that's not the will of the Lord. The will of the Lord is for us to put our hands to the plow and to plow with a rejoicing heart, with a grateful heart, with a thankful heart, and to look on the harvest and realize that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers. It's not about whether the harvest is ready. It's not about praying that God makes the harvest somehow become ready snap his fingers and make the harvest just appear before us. The harvest is already appearing before us. But God is looking for laborers that will join in the fight, that will join in spiritual warfare, that will get on their knees and stand in the gap for a soul, that will stand in the gap for someone that is lost that will have the heart to say that I'm not going to sit there and watch time go by. I'm going to seize the moment. Every moment is precious. Every second is precious. And we have to take advantage of what God, of the time that God has given us. Jesus told His disciples, He said, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And the Bible says when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven... As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, and which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. They listened to the words of Jesus. They were so content to be in the presence of Jesus, in the physical presence of Jesus. But when Jesus was ascended into heaven, they stood there gazing into heaven as though they were unaware of their surroundings. They were unaware at that time of, of the people in the world around them. But there were angels that were sent from above that came to them and said, why stand ye here gazing? It's important that we do not get caught up in the gazing. And gazing to the past or gazing to the future or thinking about what could have been, regretting about the things you didn't do or hoping for maybe a better day, for maybe a brighter day. If someone is constantly reliving the past or obsessing and fantasizing about their life in the future, all of a sudden right now becomes diminished. Right now is no longer important. Right now is irrelevant when we start gazing behind or gazing before. I know we have to prepare for the future. I know we get excited about the future. I get excited about the promises that God has given us, about the promises that God has spoken over this church and over this world and over, over our fellowship and over your families. Those are things to get excited about and to look forward to. But our the, the determining factor for our destiny is how we live in the moment is how we serve him in the moment right now forgetting about what the world thinks forgetting about what the, how the economy is it, it might, might be doing forgetting about uh, what, what the media is saying those things are of no consequence or no importance to your moment for, in the kingdom of God right now people stand there gazing 
in the past or in the future and therefore they live recklessly or without consequence, sometimes even lazy because what's happening today or right now is not as important, so I'm just going to skip that track to the next one. But you might be missing a great word, a great a great anointing that God wants to give you right now. He's using this opportunity to take you to a deeper level, to take you to a higher level in Him. He is shaking, I believe, this world, not just this world, but He is shaking the church. He is shaking our families. He is trying to get our vision and our focus where it should be. He's trying to get rid of the distractions in our lives and understand that the moment we live in is precious. That the time that He has given us is precious to use for His kingdom. To be laborers in His harvest. To say... Say not, there yet cometh four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the hills, for they are ripe already to harvest. Don't miss what God has for you. Don't say, oh, just four months from now, just two years from now, when I get a little older, maybe when I get married. Maybe maybe someone might be saying that today. Maybe when I get married, maybe I can be used in the kingdom of God. Man, if I was just in my 30s or 40s, if I was a little younger maybe if I had the energy of my youth maybe God can use me say not that elder person say not say not those things young person but believe that God can use you believe that God wants to use you here in this moment that God is speaking to you even now He's trying to get a hold of your heart. If you're listening today, if you're under the sound of my voice, God is trying to get a hold of your heart for what He wants to do, for what He is, He wants to prepare you for the revival that's ahead of us, that's here right now. He is preparing us. Don't let, that t- don't let this opportunity pass you by. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I stand at the door and knock for those that will set the distractions aside and follow me with your whole heart. We love, we love the snooze button. Sometimes that's my best friend, the snooze button. I... I, I I have been known to use the snooze button from time to time. And you know what? More often than not, when I'm using the snooze button, I find myself missing out on things that I would have loved to be a part of. Because I snooze the alarm, and next thing you know, two hours later, you missed it. The the moment passed you by. There's a lot of us in the spirit, if we could be honest with ourselves, that if we have hit the snooze button and, and looked for a time way into the future when God could finally work that miracle out, could reveal those things to us, could fulfill His promises to us. But God is saying, stop hitting the spiritual snooze button. Get a hold of me today. Grab a hold of the hem of my garment today. Push everything aside if you have to. All the things of this world aside. And focus upon me today. We miss things. We miss important things in our lives because we stand gazing. We hit the spiritual snooze button. I remember when I was younger, we used to go to my aunt's house out in the country. Uh, and they had a swimming pool, and I was probably maybe five or six years old, and maybe a little bit older, and I remember that was just the highlight of my year, going out there, and, and man, this, they had a, it was so amazing, this swimming pool, I could get with all my cousins, we can play in the pool, and, and just have a good old time, and I remember driving to their house, and looking, so looking forward to that, but on the way to the trip, as often young, young people do, I fell asleep in the back seat, and um, next thing I know, it's a couple hours later, and I wake up in the vehicle, and no one's around. And um, I make my way to the house, and everyone had the towels wrapped around them. Their hair was soaking wet. They were soaking wet with the water from the pool. And I had realized in that moment that I had missed the pool time with my cousins. And I can still remember to this day walking up to my sister, walking up to my cousins and saying, hey, 
Let's take the towels off. Let's get back in the pool just one more time. Let's get back and have fun just one more time. But I had missed the moment. I had missed the opportunity. I had missed that time because I was too busy sleeping in the car. And nobody woke me up. And I tell you what, I still, I still have hard feelings to that day not being woke, woken up by any of my family. No, I'm, I'm picking. But, but, you know, that's what happens in our lives is we get so, we, we get lulled to sleep by the things surrounding us and we, and, and we can't focus on what's really important. It's like when we're at a restaurant and you got your, you got your, your, your wife in front of you or your husband or your, or your children. Instead of taking advantage of that quality time with your family, and you don't know how we don't we don't know how long we're going to have our families with us. How long that loved one might might be with us. I try to when I go home I try to spend as much time with my grandmother and my mother as possible because I cherish every moment now that they're getting a, a little up in age. Every moment I have with them. But we we sit with our loved ones at a restaurant at a table and we hold our cell phones and we're focused on something else other than what's really important in life. And how many times do we get caught up with that? And I believe God is refocusing us and repositioning us. And we need to understand what is really happening right now. And be thankful. Be thankful for the day and time that we live in. The Bible says in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So you need to look at what's happening around you and around your world and realize that this is the will of God concerning your life, concerning your family, concerning your ministry. And take full advantage of that. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you maybe even now as you sit and watch this. If those disciples continued to gaze, they would have missed the most important thing in their lives. Because it wasn't long after that that they found themselves in Jerusalem. They stopped the gazing and they, and they listened to the voice of God and they went to Jerusalem in an upper room. And the Bible says the Holy Ghost swept in that place and they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. If... If there's someone listening to me right now that has never experienced the Holy Ghost, I want to tell you, just like the disciples that got caught gazing and they woke up out of that sleep, they woke up out of that snooze, and God filled them with the Holy Ghost in Jerusalem, I want to let you know that the Holy Ghost is the greatest thing that can happen to you. The Holy Ghost will transform your life. The Holy Ghost will, will take all the bad and give you all the good, will bless you. You will have the favor of God. All things will be passed away and all things will become new you will live a transformed life with the Holy Ghost they were able to, to experience all of that in that upper room Peter would have not been able to preach the message on the day of Pentecost when he said repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost it was a promise. It's a promise to everyone, to your children, to all those that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. God is calling each and every one of us today. I don't know if you've, maybe you've been in church for years, maybe this is your first time hearing a message like this. But the Bible says it's not God's will for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. He's calling each and every one of us today. I heard Bishop say a couple weeks ago that there's never been a day like this. There's never been a day like this. We see pestilence. We're seeing these viruses. We're seeing all these things. The economy is, is, is so uncertain right now. It's so volatile in this day that we live. But when I read the Bible, it talks about the end times when it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now, it's not, it doesn't go on to talk about COVID-19. It doesn't go on to talk about the earthquakes and all the physical, all, the, all those external things. It's not, it doesn't go on to talk about murder hornets or those type of things that people get all, wring their hands and get all worried about. But if you notice what 
The Bible says, it says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of them that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. He was talking not about those external things which really shouldn't affect your walk with God, but he was talking about the matter of the heart. God is concerned today with the matters of your heart. He wants you to give Him your heart. The prophet Joel said, rend your hearts and not your garments. Our response to all of this, our response to the voice of God and what we're seeing around us should be a response of acknowledging and repenting before God, acknowledging that God is in control and that we want to be a part of His kingdom and a part of what He's doing in this last hour. And whatever i got to do to be ready, that's what I want to do. Whatever i got to do to please Him, that's what I want to do. My aim is not to please men, but to please God. Break up the fallowed ground of your heart and sow not among thorns. But it's a heart issue. God is concerned about your heart today. The Bible says he, he, he has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Somewhere along the line, maybe someone's heart went astray. Maybe darkness has filled your heart and filled your life. God is concerned with bringing your heart back to Him. And He's going to meet you right where you are. He's going to meet you right where you are. If you can today, if you could find an altar, if you can find a prayer closet, pray until the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Pray until you speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Get a hold of the Lord today, wherever you are. Allow God to speak to you. Don't let this moment pass you by. I know there will, you, you might want to skip to another song or skip to another time, but now is the time to seize the moment that we're in and understand that God is trying to prepare us for His kingdom. Find an altar. Find a man that will baptize you in water in the name of Jesus. You don't have to live in fear and bondage. There is a God that loves you. There is a God that cares for you. There is a God that is saying to you now, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. God wants to make you new, all things new in your life, and cleanse you. He loves you. Amen. Amen. Find an altar. Find a place to pray today and get a hold of God, I pray today. Don't let, don't let this moment, this opportunity slip. Amen. Wake up out of your sleep and allow God to touch you today. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. When Pray wherever you are. Fades, and all is stripped away. And I simply come. Longing just to bring oh, something that's worth. That'll bless your heart And I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the